Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel, Cybersecurity Ranger. This is the fourth video in Nmap scanning series. Today we are going to uh, demonstrate how to evade firewalls and IDS. Now, usually the firewalls, they block Nmap scan. So I'm using a bit defender on my host operating system that I'm going to scan. Uh, I just performed a scan uh, a minute ago and you can see here a port scan was blocked and I'm going to demonstrate it one more time. And also I'm using another operating system, Windows 10 virtual machine that I have the Windows Defender firewall which is switched on on this, right? So we are going to perform these uh, firewall evasion techniques on both of these hosts and let's see how it goes. So before I begin, first of all, I'll just try to perform a simple scan. Sorry, on 36.1. And it has already notified me that it has blocked the scan, so it's not going to give me the notification again, but we will see the results here that all the ports are usually in the filtered state or ignored state, which basically means that the firewall is blocking it, right? Uh, you can see here that all the thousand ports are filtered uh, and they are in the ignored state, which means the firewall is actually uh, blocking the scan, right? So the first uh, scanning technique that we will use to evade the firewall or bypass the firewall is hyphen F for fragmentation. And then I'm just going to write the IP address 36.1. Uh, hyphen V is for the verbose mode to see. And now you can see that it has actually discovered the open ports on my host operating system on which the firewall is switched on port 135.39.445. However, here you can see that when we perform the scan without fragmentation, it basically shows that the firewall is blocking the scan, right? Uh, I'm going to perform the scan on 36.141 as well, the operating system on which I have a Windows firewall switched on. So you can see here the ports are open, 135, 39, and 445, right? So this is the first technique that you can use fragmentation. Now, fragmentation basically means that uh, Nmap is going to uh, make the fragments of a of the whole packet. So usually um, the TCP header, for instance, is 20 bytes in size. So if you use hyphen F option, it basically fragments that 20 bytes of the TCP header into eight bytes, eight bytes, and then four bytes, right? So usually how the, the IDS and the firewalls, they work that they have the signatures of Nmap scan, of course. So by dividing the packets into smaller fragments, uh, you can actually evade the firewall. So this was uh, the first method by which you can evade the firewall. Another method is by using the decoys. So decoys mean that you're going to use uh, decoy IP addresses uh, to, to confuse the firewall. Um, so the firewall or the IDS won't exactly know who is the actual source who is trying to perform the scan, right? So the way to perform a decoy scan is you can use huh, nmap hyphen ss hyphen these for the decoy. And then I'm going to use these IP addresses 10 10 10 10 10 10 11 10 10 10 dot 12 is the IP addresses of the decoys. So capital D hyphen D is for the decoys. And then this is the target IP that I'm trying to scan the Windows operating system on which I have a Windows firewall. And obviously I can do the same for 36.1, which is my host operating system. Um, so what I'm going to do is that I'm also going to switch on the Wireshark to actually show you that the source IP address is not the IP address, not only the IP address of the Kali, but you can also see uh, these IP addresses as the source IP addresses who are trying to perform the scan, just as a proof of concept. So on ET0, I'm going to start the scan. And here you can see that 10.10 .10 has started appearing. I'm just going to stop the scan here. So we have found out the open ports by using the decoys. 
But at the same time, you can see here in the Wireshark that the source, although the IP address of Kali Linux is uh, 36.134, but you can see here the source IP address is 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 11, 10, 10, 10, 12. Uh, and obviously the original IP will also be there in the source uh, along with the other IP. So now it depends on uh, how many decoys you want to use. You can use uh, five IPs, 10 IPs. Uh, it's up to you. Now, one way to use the decoys is that you can give your own IP addresses. Another way is that rather than giving the IP addresses, you can actually uh, select an option called rend rnd and then here you can write for example i'm going to write 10 right so what this is going to do is that it is going to randomly the nmap is going to randomly pick 10 ip addresses as the decoys and then start scanning the target which is uh, 36 or 141 uh, it's the same as the previous one the only thing here is that i'm not giving my own ip addresses as the decoys rather than I let nmap to choose any random 10 IPs. You can put 20, you can put 30, you can put 100, whatever uh, number you like, right? So this is a second technique for evading the firewalls and IDS. Um, another method which is uh, uh, very similar to the fragmentation is called the MTU. So if you wanna scan um, by using the hyphen MTU option, uh, you can give the uh, number of bytes that you want to pick for the MTU. So 168.36.1, for instance. Now, what it does is it does a uh, pretty much similar thing to the fragmentation. However, here MTU means that the size of the frame is going to be eight bytes. Now, um, the standard MTU size, uh, let me just check on the internet. I'm not sure, I just forgot it. Mm, if I'm not wrong, it's I think 1400 bytes, I guess. Something like that. So my internet is slow, let me check on my host. MTU size. Yeah, so the MTU standard size is 1500 bytes, right? You can change the MTU size uh, by using Sorry, please pardon me. I have multiple virtual machines running on my system, which is making it pretty slow. So I cannot afford to have the browser because it eats up a lot of memory, right? So like I said, you can Google the MTU size. It's 1500 bytes. So we can make it 16 bytes. We can make it um, eight bytes, uh, 24 bytes. I think it should be the multiple of... Uh, Eight, right? So again, uh, this also does the similar kind of thing by reducing the frame size uh, to avoid the detection by the ideas on the firewall based on the signatures. So this is another option that you can use to evade firewalls and ideas. If I'm not wrong, uh, there is a script called firewall-bypass. So uh, I think hyphen hyphen script firewall dash bypass right let's run it on the second target i don't want to keep attacking my own host machine so you can see this is another script that can be used to bypass the firewall by using hyphen hyphen script firewall dash bypass the results are pretty much same and the reason is because we're not giving any other uh, options to nmap rather than just performing a port scanning uh, which, op you know, find out the open ports. Uh, if you put hyphen SV here, it will show you the service version as well, All right? So this was probably the third or fourth method that I discussed. Um, then we also have another option called idle scan, right? So I'm just going to type it here as idle scan. Now, ideal, idle scan, it actually requires a zombie zombie computer uh, on the network. So if uh, you want to use this option, you have to make sure that there is an actual system which is in the idle state. It's a zombie, it will act as a zombie. 
So the difference is going to be that you will not be performing scan directly on the target, but you basically send the scan to the um, um, to the zombie machine, and the zombie machine is going to send a request to the uh, to the target server or the target system, and then by looking at the IP ID value, IP ID value. Um, the Nmap actually then tries to find out whether the port is open or not open, right? So, like I said, um, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to tell you how it works or what is the syntax. So you have to write hyphen SI for the idle scan. And you can read more about idle scan on the internet as well, that how it actually works uh, based on the IP ID value of the packets. Here you will give the IP address of the zombie machine, and then here you will give the IP address of the target server or the target machine, right? Uh, it's a bit tricky kind of attack, so I'm not sure if uh, you will get the desired results, but this is yet another method by which you can perform the scan, right? All right, so the next one that I would like to talk about is by using the proxy. Um, so in this, uh, I think hyphen hyphen proxies. So what you do here is that, uh, again, this is yet another method by which you can use any proxy server to perform the scan on the target system. So you don't wanna get detected that who is performing the scan. So you can use a proxy server for that purpose. So here I'm using a free proxy that is I just took it from the internet and then this is the target system that I want to scan. Um, and let's see if we can get the results. So there we go. We have found uh, the open ports by using a proxy as well. Pretty much similar to the decoys. However, the difference is here we are using an actual proxy to uh, you know, evade the firewall and the IDS. Now, there are plenty of other options as well for firewall evasion. Like, for example, there's a bad sum uh, methodology as well. Uh, there is a data length packet. Again, you can change the packet size uh, to evade the firewall. So I'm not going to go through all of them. Uh, I'm just going to show you in the help. And then you can go ahead and try the other methods as well, right? So... Let me see the host discovery firewall evasion. So I have used the fragmentation. I have used the decoys. Uh, I have used the proxy. I have used the idle scan, which is not listed here, but it's somewhere in the scanning techniques. Uh, the data length, I just told you that you can change the data length. Bad sum can also be used uh send with a bogus tcp checksum so sometimes um, the ids and firewalls they look at the checksum to detect whether it's an nmap scan or not so you can use the bad sum option to evade detection right um i think i covered most of the important uh, options that are listed here right Yep. Um, there is also another um, another important uh, you know scanning technique that you should keep in mind. If you do not want to get detected by the firewall or the IDS, uh, you have to look at the hyphen capital T option as well, right? Now, if um, if you increase the value of T, it basically will increase uh, the scanning speed. I mean, it means that it is going to make it faster, right? The faster scans are usually going to be detected by the firewall. So I would suggest that you can try to use uh, with hyphen T as one or two, but it is going to slow the scanning process uh, but it will help you to evade the firewalls as well, right? So let's just try this. Uh, I'm not going to complete the scan because it is going to take more time. If 
I make it, for example, two. I guess it should be like this. And then I put hyphen SV 192.168.36.141. So, so hyphen two means that it's a slow scan. Let's just see if I can use it in the verbose option. Uh, so if you increase the value of T to five, it is going to be much, much faster. But like I said, a slow scan is usually recommended if you are trying to evade the firewall and the um, firewall or the uh, the IDS, right? So you can see here it has discovered an open port 139 on 141, uh, discovered an open port 135. So you can try to use the hyphen T, the timing value as well. You can make it really slow by using T0, I guess. I'm not going to put the... Uh, Right, so this is, I think, the, the least uh, speed for scanning. So it is going to even take more time to scan, right? The slower, the better. All right, so I'm going to uh, conclude my video here today uh, on firewall evasion and uh, IDS evasion techniques. If you like the video, please like and subscribe. And I would also like to request you to tell me in the comments if you want me to cover a certain topic and if you want me to make a video on a certain tool, for instance, right? Thank you and have a nice day.